Okay, uh, chapter 4, this is posing. So my character, he has all the detail in there, uh, but right now he's at the lowest subdivision level, and I click the T-Pose Mesh button so that it takes all the sub-tools and puts them into one, and now I can start posing the character. Uh, one thing I want to stress is that a little bit goes a long way, so you might want to take some extra time when you are masking the character and placing the transpose tool because you, you put that in there and you start wiggling it around and you know the you really have a huge impact on your character um, right now I'm starting off trying to tweak his legs I have an idea for what I'm doing with this he's he's gonna be sort of walking to the top of a hill uh, so here I'm just trying to play with his legs one nice feature is grabbing the middle of that tool and you can rotate right along the axis. So here I'm, you know, selecting the leg, masking that area, inverting it, and then control and clicking in the mask to, to soften the mask so that when I do twist the transpose tool on there, it's not holding the, the edges solid because you want it to be flexible. But, you know, where the bend is and where the mesh is collapsing is important so you may want to you know sometimes you want to soften the mask sometimes you don't you know each choice is is different uh, here I'm putting the transpose tool right in the middle of his hips so that we can do the contrapposto that's a good way to get it in there uh, you don't just have to select a limb to use the transpose tool. You can do lots of weird scaling and moving and rotating uh, just anywhere on the mesh. Uh, yep, so here I clicked the transfer the, the mesh onto all the subtools. So now it's, you can see all the subtools listed on the right. Or actually, you know, I forgot to save it out. Right, so the transpose, or the, uh, the T pose mesh tool, you can save out this OBJ. And that will, you know, you save out a pose file, essentially. I can go back to my symmetrical model and sculpt the detail into that. And when I'm happy again with the detail, I can just open up the pose file and reapply it to the, to the new mesh. Uh, here's the base that I brought in. The bottom of it had a polygroup, and uh, I did that to keep the bottom flat. So when it when I get the print, you know it'll sit on a table. And clicking double-sided, making sure his feet stick through the base. That's for printing concerns. Uh, we'll go over that more in a different chapter. So now that the base is in, the base is in, I'm going to sort of reassess the pose and, and make sure that the the weight of the character is believable. Posing a character is really fun. It's just a chance to get another look at your guy. Um, and with this work, with character modeling and even working inside games, you're always building the character, you know, standing in that symmetrical pose. And that does get a little dull. So opening him up in ZBrush and playing with the transpose tool is really fun. I just bend the arms and legs around at weird angles, and, you know, it, immediately it gives life to your character. And it's an excuse to just get better at sculpting. So if you do have a dynamic pose, you're going to have to do some resculpting, but um, but you should. It's good to have a, a wider range of anatomy knowledge than just straight limbs. Uh, this is looking pretty good. This is looking the way I wanted it. So uh, we'll, we're done with this chapter. Uh, next will be uh, decimation, final check, and decimation.